Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I got the 2024 Audi Q7. Now this is in the samurai gray exterior color. This color option is a $600 add-on. And let's take a look at the front of the vehicle. Look at that matrix LED lighting for the headlights. And the top of the hood, you have those nice sleek lines coming down, leading into the front single frame grill. As you can tell already, this has the black optic package. You see the black Audi rings over here, the black grill in the front. Now we come down, here are the vents. You know, leading throughout the side. You can see the sensors. Once again, the LED headlights. When we come to the side, this has 21 inch rims. Tires are 285, 40. And let's take a look at the side. See that side, a little a bump out in the side skirts. And you have the uh, signal on the back side of the side mirror. The nice black. Uh, trim on the side of the windows Nice sloped roof This is your mid-size three rows seven passenger family SUV now when we take it back to the rear You can see the taillights the black Audi ring Obviously, this is the quattro all-wheel drive blacked out badging for the Q7 and you can tell the exhaust is actually blowing down on the bottom let me know what you guys think it looks very nice a sportier version is available for as the SQ7 but with the Black optic package, it does give you somewhat of a, a sportier looking trim. Let me know what you guys think. I just want to give a quick shout out to Armand from Audi Hawthorne. I just want to thank him for giving me the opportunity to review this uh, new Audi Q7. Remember, if you're in the area, or even if you're not in the area and you're looking for a an Audi, of any any vehicle any model please come see Armand I'm gonna link his contact in the description as always and also I put it I put it right in this uh, video frame as well his contact info so you can get in touch with him very humble guy works with you very fair great salesman great person in general please take a look and you know reach out to him he's gonna help you out all right Thank you, Armand. Now let's take a quick look in the interior. You can see this has the uh, black interior and the soft touch plastic on top. And you have your wood, ash wood inlays right here. Some leather, leather wrapped handle with stitching. Here's your door uh, panel controls, side mirror, your window adjustments, and your child lock, which I always, I always prefer this uh, method instead of you know manually physically <coughs> pulling up the or pushing down the uh, child safety on the rear door this is so much easier and convenient here is your uh, button for the trunk release and you got some storage spots here uh, you can fit a big bottle here uh, maybe a 30 ounce Stanley if, if you're into those and some little space for snacks now we come over to the side I mean into the interior nice leather seats uh, these are not perforated, so this will probably only be uh, heated. That's it, no ventilation. Now let's take a look in the interior. We have the standard Audi steering wheel. Nice grip to it. Nice, nice girth all around. The nice uh, Audi rings or emblem in the middle. Your easy, you know, 
uh, uh, scroller or buttons to you know scroll the virtual cockpit here um, also your voice recognition and your volume your basic controls obviously you need have the memory seating or settings here which is a number one priority in my book and when you come to the dash you have this stitching over here soft touch uh, plastic um, you do have the carbon inlays and also right here you see this is the wood ash inlays that lead up to the side where you can see it through the sun and the passenger also has this nice soft leather seating very luxurious uh, if we come to the middle to the touchscreen you have two panels you know the top is for your basic uh, uh, navigation and your system function and down here is all for the temperature controls for your HVAC system in here very easily accessible you know right now I got the heated seats on I'm gonna shut them off and you have your shortcut to your drive select modes um, if you want it to be comfort or normal setting and sportier over here you can see the review camera very nice crisp quality um, top view 360 if anybody needs that this offers it and let's go to here let's let's check out the touch screen very responsive navigation right it's like very quick and let's check out the let's see if the audio let's go to the radio and see how this comes with the Bang Elfson sound system. For me, I normally like putting the bass and treble up all the way to the max. That's how just that's how I roll. And now you can see the 12.3 uh, inch virtual cockpit over here. I always enjoy the technology that this you know offers. Look at that. Very nice. And here are your stocks on the side, your typical standard one for your turn signal, you know, your cruise settings, and your wiper blades. All right, here's your mini paddle shifters right here. It should be much longer, but, you know, this is not a performance vehicle. Um, there is a performance option uh, with the SQ7. Now, that's a different story. Right, but I do like the matte feel to it. And let's get down to over here. Your start, stop button. Uh, you got your shifter here for your gearbox. Here is the different modes. Over here, you got your two cup holders, uh, a key holder right here. You can fit the keys in there, and your 12 volt charger. Uh, too bad this doesn't have a cover. All right, and you got some extra storage space here. When you lift this handle here, you have your wireless phone charger, some small little storage. You got more USB uh, charging ports there. Not much storage. All right, armrest is wide enough. Feel comfortable enough. Enough room, and um, kind of smooth over here. Comfortable. Um, here is your or your visor, standard. The grab handle and you also have a panoramic sunroof which looks beautiful let me know what you guys think of the interior now let's take a look at the rear same door trim as the front throughout here you have a bench row seating uh, keep in mind this is a seven passenger vehicle and let's check out the leg room capacity here right now I was five I'm five nine so this is my driving position I could move it up a little bit more because um, I don't lean back as much as I used to but right now you can see I have like three to f three inches of space over here of leg room and it, it's perfectly comfortable um, the head height I have I'm 5'9", so I have 
two inches of headroom space. So if you're comfortable, it's not cramped in the middle row. Um, got your, your ventilation over here. Grab handle, your reading lights, right? And your hook for any uh, hangers or clothing that you need hung up. Here's a shot of the panoramic roof, glass roof. Middle console with your storage. Oh, sorry about that. There you go. Two cup holders here. All right. The water bottle. And a small little seat for smaller adult or a child. That's preference. Here's your ventilation uh, for the HVAC. You control your own uh, temperature in the back and the uh, airflow. Nice, simple, nothing special. Seating is comfortable. All right, let me know what you think. The second row. And now let's go check out the, uh, the third row. All right, to access the third row, you have to lift this handle up. See, it will fold down and lift this up, push and pull back and lift up. And it'll automatically go up. Now, what's this cool about this function is you have your uh, powered rear seats or dirt row seats. All right, so with a push of a button, this is to have the seat come up. All right, and here's the other side too. Very convenient. And also, you could also uh, fold them down by holding the two buttons there. quick and simple that was probably like five seconds all right let's climb inside and see how well or how comfortable or uncomfortable this may be Ugh. all right I'm in the back right now in the third row see is comfortable it's the 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 seating itself is comfortable and also the seat itself is lower it's much lower it feels like you're, you're sitting down into something into like a bucket or you know or bowl so you have I think they do this because of the headroom because as you can see from the ex uh, exterior it has like a slightly sloped roof line that leads towards the back uh, right now my hair is touching the the roof well my hair is spiked up um, so you probably have like one inch of headroom. Think about it. If you're like six feet, you're going to feel cramped and your head's going to be touching the uh, roof line. So that wouldn't be comfortable at all. So I'm 5'9". Five 5'9 nine. Five nine is good. It's doable. And also 5'10". Anything over than that, then you shouldn't be sitting in the back. So the rear is basically for smaller adults or yeah, obviously children. All right. Let's, let's, let's check out what this... Oh, look at this already. It's kind of tight already. Like, I have no leg room anywhere. I'm scared of, you know, folding this up. But right now, as you can see, if this leans back, I probably, my kneecap will probably be touching the back of this seat right here. So it's a very cramped, tight space. Um, like I said, this is a mid size three row SUV. So. It's, you're not going to be looking to sit in the back. Uh, definitely have your children sit in the back or have kids sit in the back instead of uh, full-grown adults. Um, you got a small little cup holder here, probably for a, a water bottle, warm spring. Uh, here's your ventilation, right? Got your nice, at least the side mirror is big. The bad thing about this is there's no charger here, so very convenient uh, they should at least put one USB port and you got the speaker right in front of you like right in front of your face so I don't know how that's gonna work um, if let's say you're just blasting music people in the back will feel it right in the face right here or at least their eardrums but other than that it's a comfy back I mean the seats at least are comfortable so it's a no-go for me in the back. It's, they sh I mean, I wouldn't sit in the back. But here's your reading lights. Um, so let me get out of here.
All right, let's take out, let's check out the cargo. Slow opening, that'll do. As you can see, look at the uh, cargo space you have in here. Uh, similar trunk space, uh, good looking trunk space right here. If, if you fold the second and third row down, you're gonna have slightly less than 70 cubic feet of storage room, all right? But if you have this here, here you could also fold this up. Let, let's do both so you can see how much space you have in cargo with the third row folded up. Look at that. You don't have that much, okay? As you can see from the side view, this is probably like 14 cubic feet of cargo room with the third row up. So you get more once the third row is not in use. This you probably could fit like 10 to 15 carry-on size, maybe 10. But here, here's your extra storage room here. Um, but that's about it, you know. Extra cargo, not too big. Let's see how it closes. Nice and smooth. All right, let's just take this out for a quick spin in the uh, the Audi parking lot. All right, let's see how this drives. Right now, I have this in dynamic mode. It's a great pickup. Now, the engine over here, this is the regular Q7, but it has two engine options. You have the uh, TFSI, 45 and the TFSI 55. Now this is the 55, which is the uh, turbocharged three liter V6 that produces 335 horsepower and 369 pound feet of torque. All right. The other one, the other option is the 45 is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, which is like 261 horsepower, which uh, I, I wouldn't suggest you getting uh, you do need that V6, you know, the higher the cylinder, the better, the quicker it'll accelerate, you know, the delay response on that throttle down, like, it's, it's kind of, it's very slow in this V6, but, you know, I guess once it gets you going, you'll be alright, even in dynamic mode right now, which is the sportier setting, other than that, it's very smooth, comfortable the handling and dynamic the steering is is much more uh, it's much heavier but it's it's such a nimble ride going around this so this is like a little race course or rally course let's let's check how it rides in comfort setting okay let's change the drive select menu let's go to comfort And that's it. Let's see how the suspension is and the helm. Now the steering is much looser now. So in the dynamic sport mode, you get much more firm uh, control. As comfort, the throttle response takes a little bit more time. And let's check out, you know, it's much smoother right now because you don't have to worry about much stuff. You see the backup camera. Very nice, easy, crisp. Back to comfort mode. You could try to hear the uh, V6 engine in here. Let's see how the kick down is. Once it gets going, it gets going. So, not bad for the V6, the turbocharged V6.
Cornering is nice. Braking is nice. Smooth. Very nice three row SUV. A bit on the small side, but it'll do the job. Let me know what you guys think. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts of this vehicle. It's a nice three row SUV, luxury interior. Great technology, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You know, great functionality of what you actually need in this vehicle. In a vehicle in general, you know, you want luxury, this has luxury feel in there. You got the leather seats, you got the touch screen, you got the heated uh, seats, um, got the virtual uh, display. You know, you got the Audi badge, the Audi line. Um, all right, let's go over this the pricing for this vehicle now obviously the q7 like i said you have the two uh different types of engine the tfsi 45 which is the four cylinder turbocharged or the tfsi 55 which is the turbocharged v6 now the starting price for the the four cylinder is at just shy of 60,000, which is 59.5 so uh, let's just call it the 60,000. and then for the tfsi 55 the v6 engine is five thousand dollars more or six uh, six thousand dollars more which is starting at 65 300 65 thousand three hundred dollars my opinion is or my advice would be to go with the v6 okay because you do need that extra step in your engine in the power uh, to help you accelerate it's much easier right now this is no v8 you know but you know i i I don't choose like for big vehicles like these um, that can tow up to like 7,000, a little bit over 7,000 pounds. You're gonna need that extra horsepower, extra torque, um, you know, for this vehicle to move, right? So my input is get the uh, TFSI 55. Um, you wouldn't regret it. Uh, now you could also add extra packages to it like the executive package uh as you can see on the exterior this one has the black optic package which makes it more uh sportier uh sportier trim look um with blacked out everything uh and you can also get you know a luxury package uh sport package you know stuff like that uh that will that you could equip to your vehicle now obviously each package comes with a price so with this spec out with the uh, the black optic package and the executive package, it, this <clears throat> the MSRP comes out to be a little bit over seventy four thousand for this vehicle here. Okay, this is a premium plus. It's not a prestige, so prestige will give you the top of the line uh, heads up display and all that other safety stuff. Which personally, <clears throat> if you need that, then go for it. But if you don't need like, you know, this extra safety features, then I would say just go with the, the middle line because uh, at least it gives you like a massage, uh, the heated vent uh, heated seats in the front and heated steering wheel, stuff like that, you know, extra stuff that you, you would want on your vehicle, okay? These are small little necessities. Uh, my biggest thing is obviously the uh, memory setting. I always have that because I hate adjusting seats when someone changes my driving position. It's very easy to get back to the position once you have that memory setting in there. All right, the driving handling is very quite smooth. Uh, you know, Audi's drivetrain is uh, very efficient, very up to date, very, <clears throat> very good um, on their vehicles. You know, uh, handling was great. The suspension was great. Um, especially in comfort setting, you know, it's a very smooth ride. This does come with uh, ad adaptive suspension uh, on this vehicle. Now, there is a performance version, like I said, is the SQ7, right? Uh, hopefully next time I could uh, have that car available and we could uh, compare that to this vehicle, but that's the top of the line Q7 uh, in their lineup. But as far as this goes, the TFSI uh, 55 with the turbocharged V6. It gives you 24 highway mileage and uh, 19 city and combined is 21. So that's a decent, you know, fuel economy, you know, especially for this large vehicle. All right. 
uh, but you get this to enjoy the comfor uh, comfortability uh, of the ride itself, especially for your family. And uh, there's some a little bit of horsepower uh, in this vehicle if you need it to accelerate. Um, but other than that, you know, great interior, up to date, two screen uh, in the middle. And let me know what you guys think. And uh, once again, shout out to Armand for letting me review this vehicle and giving his time and energy. Uh, also, please check him out. Uh, like I said, I'll put a link in, his, uh, in my description for him, for his contact and for his location. Also, thank you guys for tuning in once again. Uh, I'm very appreciative of you guys checking out my channel and uh, it motivates me to continue to do this. Um, enjoy my hobby and especially the love of cars all right uh so please like please comment please subscribe let me know what you guys think in the comments of the q7 all right and i'm out